<clears throat> hey everybody I just start over because um, I wasn't sure if my what you call it my um, audio was working because I had my headphones on for like the past 15 years all right I'm just gonna I packed a bowl it's been kind of um, yeah it's been a pretty ah uh, dang it did I not bring my sorry I gotta look for my torch I just oh it's right here um, it's been a hard couple of days, a hard fought couple of days, but I gained a lot of traction. Um, I'm really grateful for that. It's not the end of the road for my challenges, but it is definitely, um, definitely a step in the right direction. That's for sure. It was absolutely a massive victory for me. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm really, really grateful and excited and um and hopeful and um yeah things uh I knew things were looking up I already knew that but um I've got something off my plate that's been taking up real estate for the past six months in my brain it was a very serious issue and it's related to my um reprisal and retaliation from being a DODIG whistleblower the things that the movies don't tell you, Congress does not give a fuck about you if you're a whistleblower. I mean, there there are representatives and senators out there who do. Um, unfortunately, they are not the rule. They tend to be the exception. And I'm very, very lucky to live in a state where our senator is God, thank God. No, I'm not saying he's God. I'm, I, and I'm not, I, you know, I don't know what his spiritual beliefs are, but I thank God that I live in this state now because my elected official, my representative for Congress, defense contractor, Green Beret, career spec ops, 06, yeah, yeah, a rent hater basically. And you know, you know what rent haters hate more than rents? Rents who are smart. And a lot of us are smart. We just, you know, we learn to, you know, placate their fucking egos over time. But anyway, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little puff puff to keep it nice and light. This is Viet nope, this is Divine Kush Breath. I got it from the dispensary. It smells amazing. It smells a little less amazing in my bowl. It smells more amazing in the package. Now I smell a little bit of the smokiness, a lot of the smokiness. <laughs> So yeah, it doesn't smell as good as it does in the, the packaging, but in the packaging, it really has a, a really gorgeous um, light scent. I mean, seriously, if there was a candle with this scent, I would, I'd probably burn it. It's, it's just really subtle and, and just very light, but there's like a little acidity or like an acidic kind of undertone to the scent that I can't explain. It just makes you want to just keep inhaling, but um smells quite a bit different in the bowl. So let's give it a go. It's my first time doing Violet Fog. I don't have a lot of experience with flower. I'm um, almost unanimously a vapor. So let's, let's try it. Wow, it's very nice. That was a very good one. I think I relight it. I see. I'm still working on my uh, proficiency with with bowls. I'm, I suck. I suck basically. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, pretty much the only thing I can get right is vapes, and half the time I don't even think I'm vaping properly to maximize the um, product uh, consumption. <clears throat> but that might soon be a thing of the past. Because now that Missouri is on board with um, cultivation rights, um, like I mentioned before, I'm going to do some research and take this up as a hobby. I mean, why not? Why not? Why not have that connection with my product? <clears throat> why not acquire another hobby? Hobbies are so good for you. I, I firmly believe if more people had hobbies, i.e. enriching activities 
that are engrossing and relaxing, i.e. enriching activities that are engrossing and relax relaxing. Um, watching porn 10, time 10 hours a day is not a hobby. That's a habit. Probably not even a very healthy habit, you know, depending. I mean, if you've gone like five years without it and you watch porn for 10 hours one day, okay, I'm gonna give you a pass, but if this is like a regular occurrence, you might have a mental health disorder. <clears throat> it might just be Bill Gates or Epstein, I don't know. Who knows, who knows? But um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it was a it was a hard day for sure. I know it sounds funny to hear somebody say, I had a really, really, really bad day. It was brutal. Ooh, oh, a bad day. One, one brutal day. Oh, okay. One, you should never dismiss people like that. But two, yesterday was six months in the making. And it was not an easy six months in the making. It was a terror-filled, um, grief-filled, numbness-filled, um, reeling six months in the making because I went from living one life one day mm -hmm. went to order a movie one night and found out some very 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 disturbing stuff yeah 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 yeah, you never know. You never know. Everybody has, oh, well, you should have done this, or you could have done that. You never know. Nobody has any idea or any clue except for my loved ones, whom I've confided in, what this journey has been like for me. This journey started, to my knowledge, well, I can't get into the other stuff because it's being investigated, but to my knowledge, this journey started um, January of 2020 when I reported General Atomics for fraud, waste, and abuse to DOD IG. And the DOD IG was the blower reprisal coordinator and the ombudsman and Congress, multiple, multiple elected officials, including my senator from Delaware, takes on a bore. I think that was Coons. I can't remember why. Why I even fucking rem remember the names? They did nothing. They did less than nothing for me. Um, <clears throat> so, for the past three years, the last six months, notwithstanding, the past three years have been hell. I've lost my career. I've been threatened. My mother's life has been threatened. Um, I've had important administrative paperwork stonewalled for close to two years with the VA. I've had my back pay, I think roughly $15,000 in VA back pay stonewalled. I was supposed to get that pay back in June when the VA finally started to decide to start paying me my monthly stipend. It took them about eight months from the time that I found out I was awarded 100% P&T um, permanent and disabled, permanent and totally disabled to the time I started drawing pay, through no fault of my own, mind you, through no fault of my own, even though the VA told me, oh, you never sent that in, how the fuck I didn't. Um, yeah, it took them eight months to, to pay me my first payment, eight months. Do you know how unheard of that is? Go on Reddit and you'll see. Oh, I got my back pay and my first payment before I was even notified of my rating, it took them eight months to give me just my monthly stipend and it wasn't even the correct amount. It wasn't the amount with the spouse. And that amount would, would have been about four or $500 more a month, tax free. So we're talking about a significant amount of money that the VA owes me and they have been stonewalling my paperwork considerably. I even, um, two weeks ago, I finally reached out to the VA um, hotline. It used to be called the VA presidential hotline. They had to rename it because it's not actually in the White House. And apparently, um, from what the representative told me, they would get a lot of people who would call be like, hey, I know you work in the White House. Get off your ass and go tell the president X, Y, Z, which I don't blame people. Like, we live in a closed loop system of recourse right now. So I don't blame people. People get fucking desperate and fucking tired of the bullshit. And when you're a veteran dealing with the VA, you really get tired of the bullshit. And with your, when you're a whistleblower and a veteran dealing with the VA, oh, you're fucked. 
Um, so the VA, um, I reported an assault to the VA um, back in March. It took me a year to finally tell my family what had happened to me a year prior when I was involuntarily admitted to a VA hospital about 90 minutes from my home, my home of residence without, without my consent, without my collaboration. And I'm clearly an articulate and well-spoken person. Yeah, because I was incapacitated, they couldn't ask me what happened and I knew what happened to me and they couldn't ask me. Yeah, they sent me to the VA hospital in Coatesville, PA. I was a Delaware resident. They sent me to the VA hospital in Coatesville, PA. Fun fact about that VA hospital. Any guesses who the director is of the VA in the state of Pennsylvania? General Schindler, the same adjutant general who I heavily implicated in my DODIG reports of fraud, waste, and abuse against General Atomics. Yeah. So the VA staff in Wilmington, Delaware, oh, you know, just like a stone's throw from Brandywine. Don't know anybody who lives there, said no one ever. Stand by. Ooh. They immediately made my spouse an active part of my treatment without my consent. I was incapacitated, remember, and they made him an active part of my treatment. I had not been, um, I had not been deemed incompetent by the state of Delaware by any shred of the imagination. Uh, perhaps the problem is I am too competent for Joe Biden's liking. Um, Pedo Joe, don't care. Don't care, apocalypse now, motherfucker. I don't care. Wait till mainstream media gets a hold of those screenshots I have from um, <clears throat> a hopeful um, senatorial candidate that you heavily endorsed. I used to support this candidate. I may have even given her money that she probably just put in a fucking crack pipe and lit up with your son. Probably with his dick and her, her asshole. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they do. I don't, they do them, no judgment here, I do me, that's all I need to know, they don't need to know anything else, um, if it involves children though, you're not, come on Joe, come on, Sister Sisnack, come on Joe, did you really think you were going to be able to hide the body count forever man, come on, um, so, yeah, it, it was not a pleasant experience for me, I woke up one morning, and I had, I, I was not aware. I woke up and I saw that there was a bunch of blood all over my pillowcase. This was in the psych ward. And I thought, ew, gross. I thought that it was just a dirty pillowcase because I was incapacitated for about a day and a half to, there, there is a stretch of time. I don't know what they gave me. I have no clue. I will never know. And maybe that's a blessing. But I was incapacitated for a few days and um, I woke up, I saw that blood all over my pillowcase. It was a fair amount. It was not like a little nick or a little scratch. It was a fair amount. And I was like, ew, gross. But then I quickly said, oh, okay, come on. It's dry blood. It's been washed. It's, you know, you're not going to get anything. So I just flipped the, the, I literally just flipped the pillow over and I was like, ew, gross. And I went to go eat breakfast. Here's where things get interesting. There's this Pan-Hellenistic motherfucker, an officer, um, very well-connected officer who did um, spec ops for the Marines. And now he has a JD from, um, from Harvard Law. Mm, yeah. Um, he was there and he kept asking me why was there blood all over my face and it, when he first asked, I was like there I don't know I, I 
And I was like, you're kidding me? He's like, no, why, why, do you, why do you have blood? Where's all that blood from? It wasn't like, hey, you got something on your face. You might want to go clean that off. It was, where's that blood? Where do you think it came from? Where do you think it came from? Where, where did it come from? Where do you think it came from? And this went on throughout the day. Like, he asked me several times, where do I think that blood came from? I don't know, Carl. Where do you think it came from? I have a pretty fucking good idea now where it came from. You want to tell me anything? Did you have a, Did you have your dick inside of me? Do I need to know anything? Do I need to get tested? Did I enjoy myself? I mean, at least, like, at least did I get my rocks off? I mean, come on. At least did I get something out of it, Carl. I know you got something out of it. Yeah, you got to stay in that program at Harvard. Mm -hmm. Do you know Jessica Scrawny? So anyway, Jessica, I took screenshots of you criticizing on social media a former supporter of yours and a veteran. And even though I clarified, clarified for you several times that I was a retired veteran, and a former supporter of yours, you still kept on with the commentary. The sitting president of the United States and the DNC heavily, heavily endorsed your campaign. Heavily. The same think tank, <coughs> God, <coughs> under Biden's dick, that recruited Cray OC, um... And heavily endorsed AOC also heavily endorsed you. Yeah. And here you are. A senatorial hopeful. And still apparently a politician according to your Facebook feed. How? I don't know. But apparently you're involved with the Delaware Assembly. How? I don't know. You, you do not have the maturity or the ethics. And certainly not the qualifications. And girl, I don't even think you know how to spell professionalism, let alone, let alone how to define it. You are not, you are not leadership material. Not by a long shot. You belong in prison orange with your girl Cray OC and Nancy Pelosi. Um, I know how you guys got recruited, by the way. It's not rocket science. You guys have a lot of sources out there who talk. Yeah. Mainstream media won't put it out there, but you guys have not been very kind to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys have some professional bodies lying in your wake. Crayo, see, you might have more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and mainstream media gatekeeps those stories. Mainstream media won't tell us about Cray O.C. and her time in, um, in college. Nah. They won't put those former classmates on television to explain her conduct and her behavior. No. Think they're going to do that with Scrawny? Um, since Biden and the DNC heavily endorsed Scrawny too? Oh, God, absolutely not. Nah. That's where citizen journalism comes into play. Yeah. Yeah, you develop relationships with people and you get to understand them and you get to trust them and you get to experience circumstances somewhat vicariously through them and hopefully clarify and bring closure and if you believe in their cause, help them find closure and justice. Yeah, but you guys wouldn't know anything about that and nor would mainstream media. No, nah. but there are sources out there and they can attest to the conduct, and they have even been retaliated against, especially from Cray OC. Cray OC is incredibly well connected. You, you do not want to get on this woman's bad side. She is incredibly diabolical. She is incredibly impulsive. She, I would even say, honest, honestly, she reminds me of a homicidal maniac. She does. I mean, if she can poke fun at conspiracy theorists and leveling that charge, that accusation is a very heavy charge to, to, to play around with, especially during a time of war. Um, then I can, I can throw that back at her. Yeah, she can handle it. You can sit there and thumb your nose at people, honest Americans and level their concerns and minimize them, distill them down to conspiracy theory. Nah, girl, you can handle anything I'm about to give you. Yeah. <clears throat> That's kind of how I feel about Crayosi. But for real, 
do you think her and Scrawny and Hunter and um, Pedo Joe had like a foursome? I wouldn't put it past them. I would not, I would not put it past these people. But anyway, to conclude that story, Scrawny, those screenshots, yeah, you will never be running for office again. Whatever you've got going with the Delaware Assembly, that's going to call for an immediate resignation and condemnation. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. Yeah. Yeah, you, you people, you elites, you take for granted that the little man is going to keep taking it lying down. But eventually, eventually people get wise. And eventually people turn the tables on you. And it's not fun to get a taste of your own medicine. Yeah. I'm, I don't need validation or permission to know that Crayo C is not a kind person and has done, she's done deeply devastating and damaging things to people. Things that have impacted livelihood adversely. I'm not talking about through some gossip around the office, somebody had a couple of, you know, two weeks of maybe ducking their head a little bit. Nah, this woman, I know, I can't even, I, this child, this toddler, I can't even call her a toddler. She's done devastating things to people. She's threatened to do devastating things to people. This is not a kind person. This is not a sane person. This is a person who should be locked up at all costs. Why the DNC has not condemned her tells me everything I need to know about the DNC. Mm -hmm. She's unhinged. She is absolutely unhinged. I would be shocked if she hasn't contributed to the hits on EM. EM as in Twitter CEO Elon Musk. I would be shocked if she hasn't. And technically, if you're getting finance from the CCP, you're financing a hit against Elon Musk. Yeah, that's how that works. If it's good enough logic for us peons in the military, it's good enough logic for the people that we protect in Congress. Yeah, you guys can swallow that fucking rule. In fact, the standard of that should be much higher. Your A-levels should be far more stringent than an enlisted airman's A-levels, just like a senior ranking officer's A levels should be far more stringent than a senior airman's A levels. Why we have senior airmen and A1Cs going to prison while their leadership gets promoted? What does that tell you about that system? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't have it both ways. You can't sit there and say that you got two senior airmen in the same highly integrated community in a small community at that. They either they are derelict in their duties and they intentionally disclosed um, classified data to these journalists. And now we have a trend which would, in to me, would imply if you're the commander or if you're the overseeing authority of this integrated community, you're derelict in your duty too. Why the fuck are you getting promoted? Oh no, oh no, that is not the burden of leadership. That is not how that works. The burden of leadership does not work in reverse. Leaders bear the brunt of something of that magnitude. That's just how it is, even when it's unfair. That's just how it is. That's the burden of leadership. You don't sacrifice the people who got you there. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's not what it's been like, I would say probably the past 15 years in the military. Stand by. Ooh, stand by. <laughs> That's leadership. It's unfortunate. It's happened to me. I've rated on people. I remember a, a really big lesson I learned and it, it sucked. I felt horrible and I knew I was in the wrong, but it wasn't intentional. 
Um, it was back when I was a new staff sergeant. So for all you airmen not watching this at home, I'm, perhaps people are naturally ingrained towards leadership. I will definitely make that argument. Yes, I know people who are naturally inclined, not ingrained, but inclined towards leadership. <clears throat> I have an elder sister, an eldest, my eldest sister, who is naturally inclined towards leadership. But leadership is also something that you learn and develop. It's an ongoing process. So I was stationed in Korea. I had a subordinate, um, or we call them troops, um, an A1C, and he was doing his um, CDCs. And he was in his um, five skill level upgrade training. Fabulous, fabulous mistake and lesson to learn as a brand new E5. I think I was all of 23. And I think I'd been a staff. So I, I made staff in this great staff giveaway. Insert jokes here. I've heard them all. I've got better ones than y'all can come up with. So it doesn't matter. Insert, insert jokes here. I don't care. Um, I know my metal. Um, so anyway, um, <clears throat> He was in the middle of the upgrade training, and one thing that I, having never done it before, even though I had gotten the training to do it, I think in ALS or something, I don't know, like the supervisor training course, how to fill out a CFETP, I was supposed to be making eight monthly annotations. I didn't do that. Um, was I told to? I can't remember. I may have been told to, and I may have just forgotten, but that's how leadership works. When we got inspected, they pulled open his OJT, his on-the-job training record, his 623 Alpha. I don't, Goldfiend's probably did away with that too. Um, and he didn't have monthly entries. And so I got deemed on it. And I, I think I got, it was either a letter of counseling or a letter of reprimand. I can't, it might have been an out. I honestly, I can't, I don't really care. I've had LORs, I've had LSEs, I don't give a fuck. If somebody has a problem with that, suck my dick. Um, I, I feel like if somebody has firewall fives, I just get like, firewall fives, never been in trouble, look perfect on paper. Okay, Ted Bundy of the Air Force. Okay, I got your number, dude. Yeah. So, it, it, hey, best way to learn how to give an effective um, feedback or... Um, or counseling or reprimand having experienced it i can give a dope fucking counseling and reprimand session like an effective one not like i'm a dick and i dehumanize a person nah an effective one yeah it's it takes time to develop it took me well over a decade well over a decade um and i still have my setbacks but um yeah having been in trouble before, having fucked up, has helped me immensely. It's probably been the biggest contributing factor, to be honest. <laughs> having, and it's not like I was like, hey, I want to fuck up on purpose. You know, just stupid decisions. Um, uh, not prioritizing correctly. Uh, I, I was, a, I, I could say, if I'm being honest in terms of uh, EPR rating, if it wasn't inflated, if EPRs were not inflated, I would be a solid four. I would have been a solid four in my younger days. In my later days, in my weather forecasting days, nah, we're talking fucking firewall five and growing. Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, so I, I got hung up on our unit inspection, um, Back when you, we used to have, what do they call them, URIs? U, UTIs? Oh, it was a UTI, all right. Yeah. Yeah, it was a real pain in my fucking cooter. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> but what what did they call, oh my God, it's going to drive me nuts. And we had to do the, for, um, oh, it was the HSI, Health Services, Health Services Inspection. I was a medic back then. And um, the JCO, the Joint Accreditation, the Joint Commission Accreditation, <sighs> I used to know it by heart, just like I used to know HIPAA. I don't give a fuck anymore, because guess what? Nobody cares. Um, yeah, anyway, that's that. Um, hold up a second. I gotta go go get Hucky out. He's crying a little bit. He might have to go potty. He might have to go potty. See you, bye. <clears throat> Ducky. Ducky. Ducky.
yeah, so that's that. Um, anyway, I, I was making a video earlier today. It got cut off. I have to figure out something with my new iPad. Um, for some reason, it says the storage is full. It doesn't give me the option, like on the iPhone, to increase my my storage capability or whatever. Um, I tried to delete some things off of it. It didn't do anything. I, I literally have no clue why it's doing this. Yeah, my guess is as good as anybody not watching this from home why it is doing this. Um, but anyway, uh, I was making a video about my SSA, my visit to the Kansas City office, and um, it, it was just you know, what could have been done two weeks ago when I woke, drove, I'm sorry, not drove, I wish, when I walked in the, I think it was five degrees without the wind chill, and it was probably, I don't even want to know what the, or maybe it was five degrees with the wind chill, but it was, it was cold. It was not like a balmy 35 degrees, not, it was fucking cold, and it was damp, and the wind was just, ugh. And, you know, there was pre precipitation on and off. Um, yeah, it was not fun. And so when I looked Miss Karen Cool in her face, I don't know what about what I explained to her, telling her, well, please, I will, I'm willing to wait until the 6th of February, but please, whoever you send to call me, please, please tell them to come with compassion. And by this point in the conversation, a couple weeks back, before they sent me away the first time, I mean, the attitude was gone. Not that it was an attitude, it was me responding to being fed a line of bullshit. Um, I'm not going to take anybody's BS, period. If you're feeding me a line of bullshit, I'm going to call you on it. it. Is what it is. If you don't like it, don't BS people. Don't BS me. That simple. Um, yeah, so, oh, stand by. Yeah, Bobby, come here, come here, Duck Duck. You got go potty? He's so cute. He sleeps really, really hard when he falls asleep. Sometimes it scares me. I'm like, Ducky, Duck Duck, oh my God, Ducky. Anyway, stay mine. <laughs> yeah, so Karen Cole, um, I told her in person, I looked her in her eye, and this was after the anger from the initial part of the conversation, and I had a, a right to be angry, the way that that person behind the window talked to me, uh-uh, no, absolutely not, got that on recording too, um, yeah, you, you have to do this shit as a whistleblower, you have to, you have to, to protect yourself. <clears throat> anyway, um, I looked Karen in her eye, and I was very emotional. I don't know if I my eyes teared up, but I know my voice was shaking. And I said, please, I've been through hell and back. Please, please, let it be somebody with compassion who can talk to me like a pro. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I gave K Karen, Karen Cole. I even wrote down my number for you. The current one. Yeah, that one. The one that you guys say that you don't have, that you do have. I know, because I've confirmed it with SSA several times. Um, but whatever, whatever. We'll go on with the gaslighting legacy. Um, you could have helped me two weeks ago. And you sent me away. And then y'all called me... Um, almost 90 minutes after my appointment yesterday that you weren't planning on keeping, Karen, right? Yeah, yeah, you were gonna put that on me. Remember when I left and you said, well, make sure you're there. You mu you need to be there, don't stand us up. You remember that, Karen? Yeah, I got that recorded too. Um, Karen, mm -mm. that little saving face speech that I gave you, I had to dig deep for that one and really find some common ground because I was terrified after the conversation I had with Nate who refused to give me his last name and his federal employee ID number um, despite me being well within my rights to ask for that after especially after the way he treated me also recorded 
Um, da, da, da. Let's get out of there, puppy. Now. Mm. You lied to me, Karen. You told me you were calling because you guys had been trying to call me. When I first talked to you. Yeah, you lied to me. And then Nate got on the phone when Nate called me. And I was wondering, why is he so bombastic off the... Karen, I know what you did. I know who Nate is. I looked him up. I found him. Um, he's got an extensive... Do you want to go to timeout? No. No, no, Bubby. He has an extensive background with the FBI as an agent. He is, I believe, if I can get it right, does defense for white collar criminal military crimes. Hmm, that's interesting. Because I know a representative in Florida who's going to need a, an attorney like that. He practices in a couple different states that are military saturated. Um, am I getting warm yet? Is that why he couldn't give me his last name and his employee ID number? Because you put an attorney on the phone to teach me a lesson? Retired vet? I mean, I'm just kind of limp here, Karen. Am I, am I warm? Are we going to gaslight me and say I'm not warm or say I'm crazy for even, even intimating that after what I've been through for the past three years? Nah. We're not going to do either of that. Either I'm warm and I'm right, or I'm not right, but it's understandable based on what the federal government has done to me for the past three years. Yeah. So either way, it doesn't fucking matter. You lied to me. I talked with Nate. Um, he denigrated me. He told me that I did not serve in the military. He did not believe me is what he said. His words recorded. He told me that I didn't have any integrity. He told me that I didn't even have a fraud to report. How he could um, assess that and conclude that after, I don't know, 30 seconds and two words? I don't know, maybe he's clairvoyant. Or maybe he already knew the contents of my file. Maybe he was read in. Karen Cole. Is there some kind of um, marker or identifier on my SSA record in the system that I should know about? Wouldn't be the first time the federal government's done something like that. Certainly wouldn't be the first time the federal government's done something like that to me. Not by a long shot, honey. Puppy, get out of there now. Come. Come to mommy. Do you want time out? I didn't think so. Come here, Bobby. Um, you didn't think I'd get wise to it, but you didn't know. You didn't take me seriously that I have to be creative as a whistleblower to protect myself. When I told you that two weeks ago that I was a whistleblower and this was an extension of the continual reprisal retaliation, you didn't take me seriously. But I bet you took me seriously after Nate let you know if you were, you might have even been in the office. Maybe you guys were like laughing, I don't know, or high-fiving each other while he was yelling at me, thinking he was putting in my me in my place when he was not. Pretty embarrassing for a man of his acumen. Just saying that, Nate. Um, I saw your CV. Impressive. Impressive. Um, I will use my imagination. Do you know about the unconstitutional arrest too from the 1st of September, 2022, Titusville, Florida? You got any situational awareness on that that I could use? That, that would be interesting. I, I would love the body cam footage if you could get that, get that for me. That would be nice. Um, anyway, could be the wrong Nate. I don't know, I don't care. When the federal government devastates your life that badly, to the degree that they wanted to devastate my life. And it was bad. It was badder than bad. Yeah, I don't care. Don't care about your feelings. Don't care. Um, but anyway, 
Karen. I gave you that flowery speech, digging deep, because I didn't want you and Nate um, doing a retaliatory wellness check on me, which is done, it's been done to me in the past a handful of times. Yeah, I'm a veteran of that too. Yeah, been around that block a time or two. The retaliatory wellness check that's also called swatting. A retaliatory wellness check is a fancy way of saying swatting. When you send an armed officer of the law to apprehend somebody that you have indicated is a threat to themselves or somebody else, AKA swatting. I've been swatted. Yeah. So I was afraid that Karen was going to do that shit again because that's terrifying. If you've ever been swatted, if you've ever had an unconstitutional retaliatory arrest because you've pissed somebody powerful off, it's terrifying. You know how terrifying it is. It's absolutely terrifying. When I got arrested on the 1st of September, I literally thought that that was the last time I would ever be seen or heard from again. That's how palpable my fear was. That is how terrifying it is. Yeah, I've been swatted because I'm a DODIG whistleblower and a congressional whistleblower because I've blown the whistle on a couple of um, congressmen too without even knowing it. I know it now. I know it now. Didn't then. Um, so yeah, uh, Nate, you will be held accountable for how you talk to me. I don't care that you have PTSD. I don't care that you're a retired veteran. You had a chance to de-escalate a really, really perverted and absurd and disgusting situation and you chose to do the opposite. I know why. You don't need to tell me or confirm it for me. I know why. Get out of there, Huckleberry. Do you want to go in time out? Come to mommy. Come to mama. Come here, booby. Come here. Ducky. You want to go in there? Come here, baby. I'm going to put Ducky on the, the, the couch. Um, so Karen calls back as soon as I tell Steve because he's like, I'm going to me, 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 me. Um, because you're not allowed to ask Steve questions and call him on his bullshit. Apparently, that is being... I don't care that my voice was raised. I had to talk over you somehow, Steve or Nate or whatever. Nate, Nate, Nate sorry, Steve, Nate. Um, yeah, I had to advocate for myself somehow. And if you're going to raise your voice and talk over me and I'm a very soft-spoken person, I'm going to raise my voice because I need to be heard. Yeah. So, and I told him, I said great thanks for the recording or whatever and hung up and that's when karen calls back oh i'm call. i didn't even know it was the same person who called to let me know they'd been trying to call me at first it took me a few minutes to figure it out and she's like i'm here to um to help get your paperwork sorted and get it squared away we're gonna take care of this administrative task or immediately over the all of a sudden all of a sudden what couldn't have been done in office they wouldn't take let me submit my paperwork in the office two weeks ago they wouldn't let me submit it via email they wanted me to mail it in so it could languish on somebody's desk so somebody could yet again tell me but we tried to contact you or we never got the mail mm -mm. no mm -mm. no so all of a sudden this person, and I'm just like, oh my God, thank God, thank God. And I, I had emailed um, in the intervening minutes my um, senator staffer to keep him in the know of what had just happened. I said, can you please get somebody on the phone? Or that was before the whole, okay, that's right, that's right, sorry, I'm getting to it. So, um, so <clears throat> she's saying, we're gonna go ahead and submit your administrative paperwork, it's gonna go through. Yeah, and that's when she says she hasn't done this job in a really long time. She's really rusty at it. I'm going to have to be patient with her. And she mention, mentions that she's Karen. And I was like, okay. And she's like, I spoke with you. I was like, oh, so you're Miss Cool. And she said, yeah. Hmm. I 
I mean, I couldn't even process it. I was like, this is the same lady that I, I was trying to appeal to two weeks ago and she sent me away refusing to take my paperwork to initiate the process. And that was just to initiate the process is what I found out when I saw Karen two weeks ago. Yeah, and all of a sudden she's telling me, oh, oh no, we can resolve the process over the phone today. And it's Karen from two weeks ago. Karen from 30 minutes ago. And that's when Karen lets the cat out of the bag. I did not even ask her. She says, yeah, Senator Hawley's office called us. <clears throat> and that's when everything fell into place. So we have a re retired combat vet, is what he told me, named Nate, who, according to him and Karen, works for Social Security Administration, who refused to give me his name and his federal employee ID number, um, and refused to let me um, initiate an IG complaint or a fraud complaint. Um, yeah, uh, wow. So he's just pissed off because I contacted my senator's office and he's mad that the senator's office called and said, get this fixed. But he doesn't know that I know that the senator's office called and said, get this fixed. And I'm sure they, they used professional language, they're very, very professional. Um, exceedingly professional to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I should be like, Mr. Thank you very cordially. Um, so I'm sure they used very, very appropriate language, but it doesn't matter with Nate. He's pissed off because I've let them in on the game and he ain't happy with it. Are you Nate? That wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. You don't like assertive NCOs, do you? Especially not women. Yeah, I know your type. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nate, Nate was pissed off at me and was retaliating against me and refused, refused me due recourse. It is my due recourse to access the IG channels. It is an open door policy, Nate. What do you think open door policy means? It means I don't need to get permission from you to initiate, n not even validate that I have, you know, an investigation worthy um, complaint, but initiate in documentation in writing for my legal protection, an IG complaint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not a good look, Nate. No, no, buddy. No, no, time out. Not a good look, Nate. And I don't care. I'm not normally somebody who is unfeeling, but after I've been what I've been through for the past three years, mm -hmm, I don't care, Nate. You had a chance. You had every opportunity. When you heard the suffering in my voice, you had every opportunity to cease and desist whatever reprisal and retaliation you were perpetuating and you didn't and all not only did you not you continued to um viciously gaslight me viciously abusively gaslight me that is what that phone call is abusive pathological gaslighting You think that's a kind thing to do to somebody who receives SSI for a protected mental health condition? And you're part of that apparatus? You think you should be doing that to somebody, to a beneficiary? Beneficiary? Oh no, that's disturbing. You shouldn't have a job after what you did to me and I don't care, I don't care. Combat vet? You get plenty of accolades. They make movies for you guys. Guess what little enlisted peons like me get? Nothing. Guess what little DOD whistleblower peons like me get? Even less than nothing. Death threats. My own mother got threatened. I don't care about your PTSD, buddy. I don't care. I've heard it.
Jesus. Try, try, try having some empathy for the people who fucking support your fucking ungrateful asses. You guys do what? 10 minutes of work under fire while the rest of us, we do the slow and steady dangerous work. Yeah, that goes unappreciated by the same people that we support. It's not the American public. They don't know because you guys have people in Congress and you guys have people in federal agencies who gatekeep that shit. So they don't, they don't know about the endemic issues of the enlisted force structure, do they? No, they don't. Because PSYOP, it's a thing. Tulsi Gabbard should know. She's a PSYOP queen. PSYOP has had a legacy of confirmed plants. Yes, not conspiracy theory. This is documented. PSYOP has a legacy of confirmed or known plants with CNN. You think if they've done it 20 years ago, they're still doing it? You would be very naive to think that they stopped doing it just because they got caught. I'll tell you what they did when they got caught. They used their internal policing system, found the person, the honest, courageous person who reported it, or people, and got rid of them. How they got rid of them, your guess is as good as mine. That's how that works. That's why it is our, it is our own officers in positions of authority, directorate positions with the VA, with the SSA, um, get out of there, hockey, get out of there. Just to name a few federal agencies, Congress, it's the J.D. Vance's, the Tulsi Gabbard's, the Mike Waltz's, the Ron DeSantis's, the Mike Gallagher's, the Larrays, the Houlihan's. Oh yeah, this is personal, guys. You say nothing about the enlisted force structure. You people advocate for you in your sage green onesie wares, and that is all. Those benefits don't trickle downhill. I'm gonna tell y'all something funny. I was in the right, Huckleberry, stand by. Come to mommy, good boy, come here, good boy. I was in Verizon about a month ago. And I was chatting with the technician and she's, oh, your military is like, yeah. And she's like, oh, you guys get um, all the fancy Pelican cases for um, your equipment. I said, what? No, it was the MagSafe stuff. That's right. I was, or OtterBox. Yeah, it was OtterBox. That's what it was. It was OtterBox. Like this new fancy sparkly OtterBox. I said, excuse me? I said, no, I have never, ever been handed an OtterBox. That's the shit that they give to the elite four spec ops guys and the pilots. That doesn't roll downhill. We do not receive those benefits. Oh, that money, that funding in Congress that they just sent to DOD. Yeah, that's not going to go to the enlisted force structure. Oh, no, 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 no. That's going to go um, for uniform allotments for officers, general officers, flag officers. It's going to go for um, staffing, attaches. Some of them might even have um, housekeepers and cooks and cleaners, um, depending on their rank. And not necessarily their rank, too. Sometimes your, your position, your position. Um, yeah. Huckleberry, down. No. Do you want to go to time now? Come here, You're being a nut. All right, stand by for just a second. Uh, come on, Dad, come on. Mommy, mommy wants to be normal. You, you are being crazy, man. You're being crazy. You couldn't let me go. You just, you didn't let me snuggle you, you crazy little guy. You can't eat the pillows that I got today. I got really cute pillows today. They're, um, here, let me see if I can show one. <sighs> They're so cute. How could I say no? Um, yeah, I. so I'm so sick of these officers who fuck up the military and harm enlisted people egregiously to get to where they are. And then they sit around and they genuflect to civilians. Um, you know, they try to appeal to their patriotism and, oh, I'm the, the military. We just want to support the military. Give us more money. You and me. Somebody doesn't get us. Please, please, goes to 
um, flight pay. Now, if we're going towards combat drone, I think it's time to ask the flight pay, but they haven't. I wonder why. Um, it goes towards, ooh, if people only knew the re-retired on active duty flying bonuses are, retired on active duty road, that's a re-road up bonuses for flying, uh, the, the, the officers, the, I'm sorry, the pilots, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm getting tired. Um, their heads would explode. Yeah, I've met, I've met officers who re-upped for, like, I want to say one told me it was like 200,000 for four years. Are you fucking kidding me? And we have airmen on Reddit asking how to get cold weather gear and rated officers, rated pilots saying, you know, oh, these people, you know, making a joke about it. Oh my God. Oh, gee. these people get so many handouts that shit never, ever trickles down to the enlisted force structure. Ever. Mm -mm. So I... I see these people in Congress, some of them still uniform service members. How that happened, I don't know. J.D. Vance, I'm sure you could tell us. J.D. Vance, I'm sure you could tell us a lot that you don't want to tell us. What do you know about what's going on right now? You know a lot, buddy. You might even know my buddy Carl Maltes. In fact, I'd rather you not gaslight and t tell me you don't. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. I really enjoyed your book. Um, yeah, whatever, dude. Um, just another rich kid appropriating poorness for street cred. That's never gonna go back to the enlisted force structure. How many times did you enlist? Did you mention the enlisted force structure? Apart from saying that you were enlisted. Yeah, exactly, buddy. That's all I need to know about you, JD Vance. That's all I need to know about you. You do not care about the enlisted peons. The only enlisted scum you talked about was you. And I agree, you are scum. Um, traitor scum. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. Nothing would surprise me anymore. Nothing. And I'm willing to know we know somebody else in common. You know Stephen Carpenter? Mm-hmm. That Carpenter, yeah. He was my attorney. I paid him a $7,500 retainer. I still have not gotten the results of the Article 138 that I filed. What, three years ago, Stephen? He hasn't given me a refund. But I haven't gotten my results either. I reached out to his staff about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and she's like, he'll be, he'll be in touch with you tomorrow. He wasn't. I wasn't surprised, though. He's a spineless piece of shit. I've seen him on Fox. He's full of shit. He does not give a shit about the enlisted force structure. I'm going to tell you what Stephen Carpenter did to me, everybody. Since he can't guarantee results, and that's going to be his fucking disclaimer to peace out of what he did to me. Well, you know what? Why should I be held to the higher standard? I'm not the fucking professional. He is. Um, Stephen pandered to um, criminal... Attorney, defense attorneys for uh, and you can look on his on his street cred I took screenshots in case he takes it down if he's not watching this from home which home I don't know because he has a fancy home in Germany he has a fancy home I think in Washington I think a fancy home like Nebraska yeah Stephen you've been so well for yourself for such a humble person and you told me to be grateful you remember that why can't you just be grateful hmm? really Stephen really Wow, what gives you the right? Why can't you just do the job that you promised to fucking do when I gave you 7,500 fucking dollars, buddy? You, you weren't providing me a fucking charity. Here's what that $7,500 did for everybody not watching at home. It subsidized the legal, um, the legal costs of his criminal clients. Some of them who were charged with murder. Yeah, he made... He made handshake agreements behind closed doors with staff judge advocates and how many different commands? I don't want to know, Stephen. I can use my imagination. Cavoli? I don't know. Holy Cavoli. There's one that the, the public should be talking about, but isn't. 
Coley is, uh, Cavoli is the UCOM commander, and he has been horrifically silent on the nuke fields in Europe. Why? Yeah. Yeah, that's strange. And you know what else is strange? There's a post floating around on Reddit. It's a screenshot of somebody's official Air Force email. Um, quite frankly, I thought it was kind of a disturbing post. It was supposed to be funny. Um, it was kind of gross and abusive, but whatever. I, I say shit too, so it's just something that was weird to me. So it's like what else. Um, and it had a picture of their, um, their CPCon. Yeah, they're in CPCon 3. Yeah, they announced it on Reddit. They haven't announced it to the American public. But apparently it's okay to announce it on Reddit. That the Air Force, at least the Air Force, and I'm assuming it's probably blanket DOD wide, they're in CPCon 3. And how do I know this? Because it's on Reddit. And it says in the screenshot, it's depicted in the upper left hand corner, CPCon 3. That's not good, General Brown. That's not good, E9 Bass. I'm sorry, if I'm gonna call her E9 Bass, I should probably be equal opportunity and call you what, O10, O10 Brown? Hey, thank you. Yeah, Americans don't need to find out that DOD is in CPCon 3 on a social media platform. I mean, that's something that should come like breaking news with the ticker tape across the, the top of the screen. Is that what that's called, ticker tape? No, I can't remember, fuck. Marquee? Hucky, come back to mommy. Hucky? He's so cute. Um. Anyway, yeah, so Stephen Carpenter was able to get at least one person off um, pretty damning murder charges. You know, just because you're not um, found guilty doesn't mean you didn't commit the crime. Just means you're not found guilty. Yeah, that's how that works, people. So if you have a really good lawyer like Stephen Carpenter, who's making handshake agreements with staff judge advocates so he can get captain's asses out of a sling at the expense of an enlisted peon who didn't even have a single charge to her name. This, I mean, my situation with Stephen should have been very easy, very easy. But Stephen didn't disclose something very important to me, did he? No, he did not. Stephen has extensive experience in getting pretty obviously toxic in criminal chains of command out of the sling. That's probably something you should have um, disclosed to an enlisted peon who's coming to you to, uh, I went to him for help with an IG complaint. I literally had to pay $7,500 for an attorney. I didn't have a charge to my name. I paid $7,500 for an attorney for help with an IG complaint because DOD was stonewalling me and I still got nowhere. But Stephen Carpenter got some people off murder charges. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Funny how that works. And I, apparently, I helped subsidize their legal fees. Does that mean I've aided and abetted a murderer, Stephen? Or if they're not guilty, oh, no. Oh, no, you might come after me. <laughs> God, what a fucking douche. I saw you on Fox the other day. You are full of shit, and there's no reason, no reason. I wish I could have understood the implications then, but I was in too dire straits to know and to think critically at that juncture. There's no reason why anybody should be actively a JAG or an SJA in practicing privately to help people with military law. That's disgusting. Happened to me with my first, yeah, this is my second attorney because my first attorney didn't even know what the fuck an article 138 was. I had to teach an attorney. I had to teach an attorney, a military law attorney and an Air Force JAG, yes, an Air Force JAG, a major about the article 138 and how to write an article 138. Yes, I paid $5,000 to teach an Air Force JAG 
who is also practicing in military law on the outside, how they can do that simultaneously is completely disgusting and unethical and I think grossly criminal. It's a huge conflict of interest. Um, yeah, I had, I had to teach an attorney that, did she come up on the back end and say, hey, wow, I didn't know that existed. She should have. She's a jab, Air Force 04. Um, Allison Weber, totally rinky. Um, no, I still had to pay the full $5,000 um, retainer. Um, she was happy to let me know when I ran low to get it topped off. Nah, there, there was no discount for that, um, lesson. I, now for her, I would say her rate's probably, what, three fifty an hour? But I'm not allowed to charge that to an attorney when I teach them something that they should fucking know already. Stand by for a second. I have to go check on Becky. Okay, that's Doc. Becky, what do you think? Alright, good boy. Come on, Becky. Um, yeah, anyway. If you're actively um, working in um, the JAG function or the SJA function or the ADC function and you're practicing military law simultaneously on the outside, that's a problem. That is a huge problem. That should never happen. Mm -mm. Yeah, and the fact, and that was my first attorney. And then I had to get another attorney because I realized, wow, this lady, I'm, not, I'm getting nowhere. I'm treading fucking water, and I thought I found a found out about this guy on Reddit. Horrible, horrible. Did not in writing, in writing, criticized me to my own detachment commander. Yeah, he scolded me. He responded to an email with my my debt co against whom I filed the complaint. Uh, he was one of the people I filed in art Article 132, 138 against. He included my debt co in that email and scolded me. My own attorney. Yep, $7,500, Stephen Carpenter. I'll never get the money back, but I can share my side of the story. You bet I can, and I don't give a, I don't give a fuck what you think with your salty little, little cowardly bitch boy feelings. I don't care. I don't care if you don't think I'm good enough to have an opinion on it. I don't care. I think you're an elitist and a supremacist. You're a rent hater. You, you hate rents. You hate enlisted peons like me. Yeah, my service doesn't count as much as your service. My human worth doesn't count as much as your human worth. Does it? Yeah, Steven. You're going to be held accountable too. It's going to be a pretty, pretty easy thing to prove. Eh, too late. Already have. Um, next time you hear my name, it won't be for me. Yep. You messed with the wrong one, buddy. Did you think I was going to take it lying down forever, Stephen? My own attorney. $7,500 that I will never see again. That I could have badly used about six months ago given how the reprisal and retaliation escalated, you don't want to know. Oh wait, you probably already do. I bet you spend a lot of time in Sanford, Florida, don't you? Uh, don't answer that, I already know you do. You might even have a house in Florida knowing you. Yeah. Wow, you've done quite well for yourself in the noble occupation, or rather the noble vocation of advocating for the defenseless. Steven, I don't know, you might be in your house in Germany. Don't care. Um, you might be in Washington right now. Don't care. Um, you might be on the horn with an attorney trying to protect yourself. Don't care. You did something really disgusting to me. You took my money and you ran. I'll never get that money back. I'll never get justice. Well, Stephen, as long as I'm alive in this body 
And surprise, the Bible lied, life is eternal. Newsflash. Um, as long as I'm alive in this body, yeah, I'm never going to take it lying down, buddy. I don't care if I'm down for three minutes or three months. I'm getting the fuck back up. I have done it every single fucking time in my life. No matter. No matter if I sat there laying on the floor knowing I could never, ever recover. I've still gotten up, Stephen. Yep, you grossly underestimated me. Yeah. You rimped on me. You never took into account my life experiences, my childhood, the piece of shit who says he raised me. Oh, he raised me all right, Sherman style. I think we know somebody else in common. You know Pierre Robinson? How was he able to get back into the army so suddenly? Hmm? He's from Grafenvir. Very sharp guy. Very sharp NCO. Did some time, I think, at NORAD. Was it NORAD? Yeah. Yeah. Steven. Shame on you. You're going to prison. Yeah, as long as I'm in this body, breathing, you're going to prison. I mean it. You don't do that to people. You are a monster. You do not do that to people. That is not kind. It is not honorable. It is not dignified. It is not even Christian. It is bobbly. I want you to... Open up your fucking ears, Stephen Carpenter, if you're not watching this from home. It is baldly satanic. Yeah. Yeah, you're Faust. You have sold your soul to the fucking devil. Mm-hmm. You're Gustav von Aschenbach. Probably in more ways than I care to know about. I hope it has nothing to do with a certain list that nobody wants to be caught on. I'll use my imagination. It probably does, because senior ranking officials have a long legacy of continuing to perpetuate human trafficking, even though about 15 to 20 years ago, DOD made it illegal, even in countries where it was legal. Yeah, I was in Germany when that happened, so I know. Yeah, I, I wasn't always a guard bum. I was active duty for 10 years. If you'd bothered to talk to me, um, you would have known that. I was in Germany when that happened. But you know what? You know what still went on? Senior ranking officials frequently frequent, frequenting um, the red light district. Oh, yeah. Steven, come on. Uh, we're not talking, we're not talking the enlisted guys down at Thirsty Nellie's on a Friday night. Yeah, been there too, Steve. You've probably gotten some um, army captains off of assault charges at Thirsty Nellie's. I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, I used to hang out at Thirsty Nellie's. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> Um, hmm. Wow. Yeah, that is a disgusting thing to do to somebody. You're not a man. You are a Stephen Carpenter. It is not illegal for me to call you a coward. You are a coward. Yep. You're a coward. You're not a leader. You're not a hero. You're not a diplomat um you know the whole warrior diplomat shit uh, shut up do you realize how artificially intelligent and vapid that sounds do we really need to go there dude come on come, dude i fucking read de tocqueville don't fuck with me don't fuck with me dude de Toc let me let me clue you in on something steven happy come here come here happy happy do you want time out? Come to mommy. Come to mommy. Let me clue you in on something. This your girl right here. De Tocqueville came to America, what, in the 1820s, 1830s, during the height of the spiritual um, revival in the Northeast, um, to study the penal colony. Fact. Or the penal system, rather. Um, fact. 
why not go to Australia to settle, study the penal colony? So de Tocqueville writes this um, seminal book in um, classical theory called Democracy in America, right? It's pretty humorous. It's pretty tongue in cheek. I mean, the guy has a sense of humor. He's, I mean, very, very cutting, very, very witty. Um, sometimes I'd have to, even like the, the titles of the chapters, I'd be like, whoa, and I'd have to read a time or two and be like, Jesus Christ, what a fucking insult. Yeah, it's an insult. He's insulting democracy in America. It was basically light infantry bullshit sent in to study America and to go back to the third empire with intel. That's the, the Tocqueville was a spy, y'all. Yeah. An academic, yes. I mean, his writing is fucking amazing. Fucking amazing. I mean, highly analytical, um, very synergized, very dynamic thinker. Um, some of the best writing I've ever written, quite frankly. I mean, I, I, Moliere is funnier, way funnier, but De Tocqueville, yeah, he's, it's a seminal work for a reason. It's, it's a, it's a beautifully written work. Um, but it was not meant to celebrate American democracy in the least. Not at all. It was a collection of intelligence and reporting back. So you think about it, he's, he's, um, going to uh prisons penitentiaries what have you to study well think about think about the demographic of the inmates back then you know 1820s were were hot off the heels of the revolutionary war the war of 1812 you think people were um held responsible for that yes were the senior ranking officials who were likely in on it held responsible no, it was probably a bunch of, like, enlist enlisted, like, you know, scum of the earth like me who were held responsible. Hey! Huckleberry, come to mommy. Do you want to go time out? Hucky? Hucky. Um, so, yeah. Great way to pick up some intel, huh? Yeah. Go to the, go to the prisons and, um, you know... Maybe bump elbows with people who served in um, any of the wars or conflicts. There were several conflicts. Pick up some intel, run off back to France. Mm -hmm. That was De, to De Tocqueville's MO. Um, it's widely touted as um, a, a classical theoretical work. It's absolutely beautiful, but it is absolutely disparaging disparaging and exploitative of American culture. So anyway, I gotta get going. I've talked for almost 90 minutes. Oh my God. Oh my, I'm so glad nobody watches this because actually I wish people would because I might've just found the cure for insomnia. For insomnia. Oh my God. Nah, it's, I'm, yeah. Anyway, I gotta go. Um, I'm gonna hit one more. I got all that off my chest. I feel like a lot lighter. Just like, you know, letting Karen, you know, it just feels good to let people know how you feel about them. I honestly, it's like one of the best forms of therapy. It is. Like I've had to hold that in for 22 years and keep my bearing. And especially the last, oh my God, my last year in service, we wouldn't go there. But yeah, it is more people should do it, you know, let people know, like, hey, I don't like that, don't do that to me, I wish I would have done it, I wish I would have known to do it, but anyway, you know, you live, you, you learn, one more for the road, This is not very, very dang. I'm, I'm surprised I can inhale so long and not have that, like that in my throat. Anyway, um, got that all off on my chest. Turning a new leaf tomorrow. 
we're gonna do some Air Force subreddit. You know what, I'm gonna focus on, I'm just gonna weed out from the jump the bullshit ones that I know the pilots and shitbag cyber ops people are posting from console um, to demoralize airmen further. And I don't know, maybe even milk them for information to harm them with, who knows, who knows? Um, but I'm just gonna focus on the ones that are clearly airmen reaching out for advice tomorrow. Because am I really helping if I'm focusing on the shitbag officers? If I'm being on honest with myself in this moment? No, I'm not. So I need to put that aside and just prioritize the authentic, genuine posts of people literally crying out for help. Yeah. Anyway, I gotta go. You live, you learn. And um, this guy's about to bite my hand off. All right, you guys have a good night. Good night.